So what is the benefit of knowing how great the throne is and how far away it is and how great the heavens are and things of that sort? Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he was asked this question, how far is the arsh of Allah from us? How far is the throne from us? And he responded with such a beautiful and profound answer. He said, a sincere dua, a sincere supplication from a pure heart. Meaning you can call upon him despite him being the Lord of the throne. It's not like he's distant from you and you can't call upon him. And so there are many du'as uh, that indicate that we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the basis of the greatness of the throne and on the basis of the greatness of the Lord of the throne. And this is something that, that's, that's beautiful about the Arabic language and also the Qur'an. You know, Imam bin Kathir rahimahullah, he said if you look at the ayah, Dhul Arsh al-Majid, uh, which means the possessor of the great throne, Dhul Arsh al-Majid, Dhul Arsh al-Majidi would mean that the throne itself is great. So it would translate into the possessor of the mighty throne. Dhul Arsh al-Majidu would mean the possessor of the throne, the Almighty. And he said both meanings are correct. And so we find some supplications that indicate to us the greatness of the throne and the bearers of the throne, and then some supplications we call upon the Lord of the throne. So with the greatness of the throne, there's a very beautiful uh, story that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, one time he left Juwayriyah anha, his wife, and she was making dua throughout the morning, and he came back after some time, and he said, how long have you been in the state? And she said, all morning. He said, I've said a dua, I have a supplication that is equivalent to everything that you've done this entire morning. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimati. So the Prophet said that saying that supplication three times equals the entire morning of praise. And so you glorify Allah, subhanallah wa bihamdi, you glorify Allah and you praise Him. Adada khalqihi, in accordance with. Uh, you know, as, as many of his creation as they are, uh, as there are, وَرِضَى نَفْسِهِ And as much as he's pleased with, وَزِينَةَ عَرْشِهِ And in accordance with the weight of his throne. So the weight of his throne, the, the, the vast weight of his throne is being illustrated in, his, in this dua here of the Prophet ﷺ. We also see that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to say four times in the morning and in the evening, Allahumma inni asbahtu ushiduk and in the evening amsaytu ushiduk. So, O oh Allah, I have uh, awoken, uh, calling into witness, uh, calling you to witness. Wa ushidu hamala ta'arshik, and I'm calling upon the bearers of your throne to witness. Wa malaikatak, and all of the angels. Wa jami'a khalqik, and all of your creation. Anna ka anta Allah, that you are Allah. There is no God besides you, and so on and so forth until the end of the du'a. So here, particularly, the Prophet Sallallahu was, was calling to witness the bearers of the throne. The Prophet Sallallahu said that whoever says that du'a four times in the morning and four times in the evening, he would be spared from hellfire. So we find du'as that mention the greatness of the throne, the greatness of the bearers of the throne, but obviously there is none that's greater than the Lord of the throne. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called by the Lord of many things, right? The Lord of uh, the heavens and the earth, the Lord of the, the, the Lord of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khayru khalqillah, the best of Allah's creation, right? Now, what I noticed is that the du'as where you have the Lord of the throne, Rabbul Arsh, being, uh, you know, being invoked, all come under a category of warding, warding off the harm of an enemy, or warding off an illness, or doing away with something that's harmful. So Allah tells us in the Qur'an, uh, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشُ الْعَظِيمُ That if they turn away from you, then say, حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُوَ Allah is sufficient for me and there is no God besides Him. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَلْتُ I have put my trust in Him. وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشُ الْعَظِيمُ And He is the Lord of the, of the mighty throne. Uh, Ibn Abbas, so that's warding off the harm of an enemy, that an enemy cannot hurt you. And that's a famous dua. It was the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown into the fire. And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he, in fact, he tells us that any time the Prophet sallallahu was in trouble or, or the Prophet sallallahu was in distress, he used to say this dua, and this hadith is in Sahih Muslim, he used to say, La ilaha illallah al-azim al-halim. لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات ورب الأرض ورب العرش الكريم that there is no god besides Allah al Azim al Halim okay so the Almighty and the forbearing لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم and then you testify you bear witness to the oneness of Allah the Lord of the mighty throne لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات ورب الأرض ورب العرش الكريم 
And so you say, La ilaha illallah once again, the Lord of the heavens, the Lord of the earth, and the Lord of the noble throne. So this is the dua that the Prophet taught us to say in our times of distress and sadness or when we're in trouble. Two out of those four phrases include once again invoking the Lord of the throne. And even when we're feeling, uh, when we see someone who's in sickness, when we see someone who's in illness, the way to properly, uh, to, to make dua for them, to read ruqya upon them, the Prophet ﷺ used to say, As'alullah al-Azim, Rabb al-Arsh al-Azim, an yashfiak. That I ask Allah the Almighty, Rabb al-Arsh al-Azim, the Lord of the Mighty Throne, to cure you. So all of these du'as again come under this category of warding, warding off evil and harm because Allah being the Lord of the throne means He is the Lord of all of creation and so as you call upon Him as the Lord of the throne, you are calling upon Him, putting your trust in Him, knowing that He is in charge of everything that takes place amongst His creation and so He can protect you from the harm of any one of His creation and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the throne to protect us. Allahumma ameen.